that this is joint work uh, with Martin Palmer and Iris Chocat. And uh, for uh, online people, uh, you can find uh, the slides uh, in, on my web page if you want to follow with this. But uh, I will uh, mostly use the board. So you have a summary in the slides. Actually. So uh, also, uh, I understand that this is mostly uh, a conference on the categorification and uh, also uh, homology is in my title. This is not about categorification. However, uh, probably uh, you know about uh, 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 so-called Heisenberg categories. And uh, this was initiated by Misha Kovanov uh, as categorification of uh, Heisenberg algebras. And we have a nice survey by uh, Likata and Savage on these topics, and some people are working on this. And uh, we can speculate that uh, at some point, uh, these uh, basics uh, in top classical topology, which I will uh, explain here, could be connected uh, with this stuff. That would be the dream. Okay, so uh, I start with some um, uh, introduction. <laughs> And uh, I will uh, start uh, in uh, 1990 uh, with Lorenz representation. And so she defines representation of the classical braid groups, EM, to uh, the linear group of some uh, homology of configuration spaces, say Hn of uh, Cn of D2m. So this is uh, the start disk with m punctures. And these are, this is disk, and these are an order and then uh, it was a very famous theorem, independently by Bigelow, <laughs> Bigelow and uh, that uh, L2 is faithful. And this implies a linearity of great groups of a real. And then from this, uh, this representation are uh, usually are uh, often uh, named uh, LKB. And so my purpose, my goal, is to study, define and study uh, LKB type uh, representation for mapping class group of a surface uh, with one boundary component, that G positive. And here, uh, sorry. Here, I forget a small thing, which is it is not exactly uh, the configuration, but it's a cover of the configuration. In fact, this is the Z2 cover. Of CN. But for me, I think just homology of CN, because uh, I think that I'm putting afterwards certain local coefficients, then it's usual to just uh, take the space with something which encodes the local coefficient. By the way, uh, okay, I, 
I should say also that very briefly, also this uh, representation doesn't look quantum. It's known that uh, they are equivalent to quantum representation. This is basically uh, from Kono. So uh, they are equivalent to uh, quantum representation using uh, highest waste uh, spaces of a quantum asset. And so then uh, we uh, give some results. So for this result, I need uh, uh, to use certain uh, local system. And the first point is that uh, when we are considering the braid group of our surface, uh, which is uh, I1 of the configuration of this surface, then it's subject not on an Abelian group, because the Abelian group will not give uh, really interesting results, but almost Abelian, and this will be this famous uh, Eisenberg group. Uh, I denoted by purely H of sigma. In fact, it's associated with uh, the homology of sigma together with the intersection form. And uh, from this, uh, you see that uh, you have an interesting uh, cover of the configuration, which will be the H cover. And this H cover can replace uh, the C2 cover uh, in uh, the Lorentz story. And uh, then from this, in fact, uh, I will do something slightly more sophisticated, uh, which is insert rho from H uh, to uh, G the L of certain uh, vector space V. So this will be a representation. And then you see it's something uh, standard, and that what I will explain. It says that from this uh, you get a homology of configuration of sigma with local coefficients in the representation. And uh, with this, I, so we are studying this uh, with different re representation sometimes. So the theorem A is general. And it says that for general V, uh, we can compute. And uh, we have a twisted action. of mapping class group, and this I will explain. And the theorem V Maybe I should explain the words. No, it's okay. Can we see? It's bad for the Zoom people, yeah. So theorem B, uh, if you use a Schrodinger representation, I will explain this also. Uh, then uh, we get a unitary representation from not exactly the mapping class group, but a rather simple central extension, a Z central extension uh, to uh, it will be unitary representation of this acting on the homology we are defining. And uh, in Schrodinger, uh, you will have fine infinite. So the original Schrodinger is infinite dimensional. Like you have also a finite dimensional counterpart. Uh, I will restrict to n even, n positive. And then it has dimension. Uh, it is 
equal uh, L2 of uh, uh, Zn, Z mod n to the G, which of course, as you mentioned, n to the G. And in this case, uh, the dimension uh, will be uh, n to the G times uh, 2G plus n minus one, sorry, uh, choice n, n to the G. So we get uh, a uh, family of uh, finite dimensional uh, unitary representations. Okay. Questions so far? So this is the purpose. Yeah, maybe I have a question. So is there a version of that where, where n to the dimension would be uh, 2g choose n times uh, big n uh, choose n? Well, because it, well, the, the, the... Uh, I can answer this. Uh, in fact, uh, as you know, uh, depending on certain, uh, on the fact that you take the native homology or Bohr and Moore homology or relative homology, uh, you have different versions. And uh, here I will focus on the version which we are able to compute. And in this version, uh, the homology uh, will be free for the regular representation. So uh, you, should, you can imagine that uh, in truth, uh, the dimension of uh, the regular representation of uh, uh, the ring uh, of Heisenberg, uh, of, uh, the, yeah, the ring of Heisenberg group uh, will be this, yeah, this guy. But there are some other you could also uh, deal with. Uh, if you change a little bit, uh, your favorite models. I, don't know if this no, I, I mean, I was more speaking about the binomial form of it because this is exactly 2G minus, so 2G choose minus F. So it seems to be like a symmetric power or something. And so. Oh, this I don't know. I have no idea. So I start with the uh, Heisenberg homology. So this, this will be the main section. So the idea in this section is define, compute, and study uh, functoriality of this uh, construction. And so here I will need the sur surface braid group. Okay, so here you have the surface braid group. Uh, as you know, it's a pi one of configuration, an ordered configuration. And uh, you have, uh, so presentation is, has, has been known for a while, but it was revisited uh, uh, by Bellingeri. And then again, uh, the version we take here uh, is uh, slightly refined by Bellingeri and Godel. And the point is to understand uh, geometrically uh, the uh, generators and to have a full set of relations. So because you, you have uh, braids, uh, you have the standard generator corresponding to include a disk in the surface. So these are sigma one, sigma n minus one. And then you have what I would call the pi one generator corresponding, because the, the braid uh, is the loop, is the configuration. It starts from the base point. So you can just uh, not move uh, all the points by the first one, except the first one. And this first one can do uh, any element of pi one. So classical generator, pi one generator. And then uh, you have, a full set of relations. It's not, I mean, the usual method uh, allowed to, to do this. It's a little bit of work. And the question is about uh, the significance of those relations. So I insist, so this is not a big deal. 
Here you have uh, what I would call commuting relations that you can establish. And here uh, you have uh, what the special uh, commuting relations. And uh, the, an exercise here is to think about a possible abelianization. So the first uh, attempt to mimic uh, Laurent's picture uh, would be to abelianize, because in Laurent's picture, you have uh, an abelian uh, cover. And uh, everything is, going, is doing good if we abelianize. Uh, but here, what you get if you abelianize is sigma one three times, uh, beta r alpha r equal alpha r beta r sigma one one times. So if you abelianize, you will force sigma one square to be uh, one. This means it will very uh, few depend on uh, the fact that you have configuration. You are almost forgetting everything in the configuration. But uh, you get something much better if you just force sigma one to be central. This means that uh, you divide by the subgroup generated by a commutator, any commutator with sigma one. You force sigma one to be central. And uh, when you do, so uh, maybe I should. Uh, can you explain uh, why sigma one, why not sigma two? So what is the uh, it's sigma organization, one? sigma one and sigma two will become equal. The abelianization of the classical group is Z. So it doesn't matter. Okay, but but still, still in this in this uh, non abelian case, oh, uh, it seems to be very special. I don't see why it's so special. Uh, because uh, you can deduce the other ones as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so so if something like sigma one is uh, the other they are conjugate to sigma one. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's enough. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Bellingeri and other work to say that you have enough relation. I mean, the, really the point here is to concentrate on this uh, relation. By the way, uh, it's interesting to see uh, why you have this relation. You see here, uh, I have to uh, explain uh, the geometric situation. My surface uh, is a disk with identification on the boundary. Usual thing for students. And uh, when I take a, a loop in the configuration, as usual, I will represent this as a graph in the surface times interval. So our surface is horizontal and the interval is vertical. So but our surface uh, is the horizontal half plane uh, limited by the black line. And on the black line, you have identification. So for the graph, uh, you have identification of the walls. In the product with interval, uh, the identification will be on walls, vertical walls. And so uh, you see that uh, the first, uh, what is pictured here is in red, the graph of a loop in configuration space. And it's clear that these two are isotopic, just move vertically. And uh, if I start uh, from below, so I will start from below and right from the uh, right. So this beta one is just, you, here I take just two points. So the first point follow uh, pi one generator and come back. Then I have a classical braid, and then I follow the alpha one uh, generator coming come from pi one. And here uh, I do another, another thing, but uh, you can take your finger and put this down, and you will get back uh, the other picture. So this, oh, this is a picture proving that you do have 
uh, this SCR relation. And uh, SCR relation, uh, maybe I can close this uh, if it's a problem with the camera. So this SCR relation uh, in uh, Vn of sigma oriented by sigma one central uh, will be just a bit beta r alpha r uh, sigma one square equal alpha r beta r. And this is typically a relation in uh, Eisenberg group. So now I start with Eisenberg group. So you can take them as a definition, which is, it's, uh, so you take H equal H omega, and this H uh, would be H1 of sigma, uh, with intersection form, omega to the symplectic form. Uh, then uh, a fancy way to define the Heisenberg group is to say, take the central extension associated with omega. And what does it mean? Omega is a two cycle, and with a two cycle, you can define a central extension. But uh, explicitly, this means that H equal Z times H uh, with rho Kx and Y or K plus L plus uh, X dot Y, omega of XY which I will certainly uh, write x dot y, uh, comma, plus y. And so the first, uh, I put this a small theorem, is that uh, we have a uh, isomorphism, the end of sigma quotiented by sigma one central, with h of sigma. We understand uh, this quotient of forcing sigma one to be central as uh, the Heisenberg group. And the proof is not very hard because uh, we, do, we do have a, pre a presentation. Uh, this quotient is canonical, but this, uh, sorry, it's, sorry, it's iso because I already questioned it. Uh, this ISO is not canonical. It's not canonical. So we should be careful in some cases. It depends on uh, the family of pi one generator you took at the beginning. <laughs> the presentation, of course, depends on the, uh, could depend on the generators. Okay. So this is the first step. And the second step uh, now is to define the homology. So we have uh, Eisenberg carver. And then uh, when I take Eisenberg carver with a right action of H. Remember that my loop are composed from the right. Let's see. And tilde of sigma, it comes with a right action. Now uh, take S star of Cn tilde of sigma, uh, you favorite uh, chain complex. It can be singular or cellular, whatever. Then uh, this is, here you have, 
Z bracket H uh, module. Right. Coming from the deck uh, action. And uh, if I take rho from H uh, to GL of V uh, representation, uh, then I can do S star. Uh, I will just put CN for short uh, with coefficient in V as the tensor product of CN tilde, as this I mean over Z, but with this uh, structure, and I tensor product with V over Z bracket H. And the homology with local coefficient V is just extracted from this complex. This is naturally a complex of vector spaces. And this is my favorite definition of the homology with local coefficient. So then from this, uh, we get H star of Cn uh, with coefficient in V. So, here we ask about computation. Uh, we asked about functoriality. Uh, but I want to comment about representation you can consider here. So first, you can go trivial. You can have a trivial representation, just see. Yeah. Any element of the group act trivially. So this means that, for example, uh, the construction will recover the case of the trivial representation, which was studied by, uh, it was not, it was all, uh, ordered, but not unordered, but for the kernel, you can do it, say something by more uh, You can take regular, Uh, you have one which is uh, 2G plus 2 dimensional, which I call the tautological. The tautological is uh, you send KX, and this X you decompose uh, in the two Lagrangian subspace, uh, can, which is canonical. So this is. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, generated by the class of alpha i and here the class of beta i and you send this to a matrix uh, where you have one i j one p q uh, k plus p dot q uh, two uh, zero so you get triangular matrices and this is a matrix realization of the discrete Heisenberg group. And so it has a natural uh, G plus two dimension representation. But this representation uh, is not semi-simple. And uh, there will be a story with Schrodinger. But I will tell you more later. Okay, so you have a lot of variations, including uh, already known things. Uh, I, you could also adjust uh, the homomorphism from Heisenberg to uh, the homology, and uh, you can also, you also get something. So you are recovering something uh, which is known. So I come back here. So now uh, my, I'm able to state, uh, I would say theorem A in the main result. So we, we are able to compute not uh, the full version, But uh, 
Borelmour relative version. OK, so first, uh, H star Borelmour of a space X. Uh, I just, probably most of you know that uh, it's a limit, sorry, of H star of X is minus T, and this is of a T compact. Uh, in many cases, uh, it's uh, the homology you get uh, when you use local chains. Okay, finite chains. And uh, for why uh, it should be so you understand that this homology is relative to infinity or to the boundary of infinity. And uh, if you have a proper inclusion, meaning that the limit uh, is at in infinity to infinity, yeah. uh, the trace of a compact, of any compact is a compact. Uh, then uh, you have H star Borel Moore of X1, which makes sense. The natural uh, functoriality for Borel Moore homology uh, are associated to proper maps. And here, uh, I will uh, decompose boundary of sigma as boundary minus of sigma union boundary plus of sigma. And these are uh, two intervals. Uh, two intervals uh, intersecting on two points. So in fact, uh, we have a preferred model for sigma, which is, uh, if I have color, yes. on the... so you have an entry boundary. I will uh, consider sigma as a cobordism. Uh, co I will have an entry boundary and then uh, I will have, we have handles. This is uh, my model for sigma. And then uh, with if define C n minus of sigma, C n of sigma, boundary minus of sigma, uh, included in CN, a configuration with, with at least one point in the boundary minus. So if you think that you are running uh, from bottom to top, uh, somebody didn't stop. And uh, now we have the theorem for the computation. I would say theorem A. So this, for NAV, uh, maybe it's better to take the answer. Is that okay like this? So this is the theorem. So we have first that HN Borel Moore of CN, CN minus gamma V is isomorphic to uh, copies of V. And there are 2G plus N minus one choice N copies of V. This comes from the fact that it's free of a uh, Z bracket H. And second, uh, we have twisted action. 
of M of sigma. So what is uh, the idea? And then I will explain the twisting. So the idea is on uh, the model. So in the model, uh, you can keep the cores of the handles, gamma one, gamma two, gamma two G. So you write gamma as the union of gamma I, and then uh, you have a subspace uh, Cn of gamma. And uh, you also uh, do Cn of gamma union in very minus. And you also have a pair gamma Cn of gamma union in very minus gamma uh, in very minus. And so you take this pair, you compute uh, the homology of this pair, uh, I mean, with uh, the induced uh, local system. And then you have to work, it's not just the deformation retraction, but uh, this plays a role. Uh, you play with uh, deformation retraction, but you need excision because when you deformation retract, uh, some uh, configuration may collide. And you have to take, uh, take care of this. But, uh, it's an interesting uh, algebraic geometry proof. Very nice. So we do this, sorry for the screen. And then uh, about local system. Yes, wow. Could you explain what does it mean uh, configuration space uh, of a pair? Uh, it's not configuration space. Uh, yeah, it's uh, my notation uh, somewhere here. Uh, yeah, but uh, ah, yeah, yeah. At least one point. Yeah, at least one point. Uh, I okay, okay, it's written. Yeah, it's written. At least one point. So you should think that uh, uh, the C n minus uh, is part of the boundary of the configurations. So about uh, look, uh, twisted. So what have we, we are working uh, with S star of uh, CN tilde. So if we take a mapping class, then uh, I, I'm cheating here because I should say that this F is a class of certain uh, diffeomorphism. And if I am careful, I should work with the diffeomorphism. I will not care here, except it if you ask. So then uh, I say that uh, Cn of f uh, will act on uh, the configuration. In fact, it is Cn of a represent of a diffeomorphism representing f. And so here, when I take my chains. Uh, I pretend that I have a S star of Cn of F, uh, which is acting as a chain map. In fact, it is up to homotopy. And uh, the point is that this guy is, of course, uh, Z linear, but Twisted uh, Z H linear because of uh, the action. In fact, uh, M is acting on H, and I will go here for this action. Question so far. 
So remember that Vn is a phi one. So you have a phi one map induced by Cn of f. So you have here uh, B, sorry, Bn of sigma, Bn of sigma. And here there is a map which I should denote Cn of f sharp because it's a pi one. And uh, here you subject on h. And it's not difficult to, and then you further go to h. And here uh, you know that this is homology action. And it's not difficult uh, to check that here uh, you have uh, intermediate action in such a way that all square commute. So you have an induced action on Eisenberg, uh, which is complex, uh, uh, compatible with the symplectic action. But you should be a little bit careful. So this FH uh, will take Kx in the model uh, Z time H and will go to, of course, here F star of X. And that here you will get K plus a correction df of x and this df is an element of uh, in fact h1 h dual you can show that it is linear this df this df is very interesting in fact i will not give detail but in fact uh, this is another side df is a cross homomorphism uh, defined by Morita uh, which uh, generates H1 of uh, M sigma with coefficient in H1. And this is a very strong result, very interesting. I will not uh, use it here. But we are recovering with this action an interesting uh, cross homomorphism. Uh, this guy is Z. Uh, if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about in this side, you just forget. So now it's not hard to see that when you do this S star of Cn of f on a chain acting on the right by an Eisenberg element. I'm trying to formulate the ZH linearity at the level of uh, chains in the cover. Then you will get Z times FH of H. This is what I mean by a twisted uh, linear map. So then from this, uh, you can define something which what you can do. Uh, remember that we are working with S star of CN tilde uh, tensor V, and we try to go to S star of CN tilde tensor V is here, it's over Z bracket H. But uh, the nice thing is that if here you twist with FH, always, uh, so I remember, so it, it's always over H. So here I take over ZH, where uh, this is uh, the deck action of H. But here I compose the representation with FH. So uh, BFH is the representation uh, FH composed with rho. 
is a twisted representation. So then here, uh, you get that E is a linear map. And maybe if I want, I have time. So, so here, uh, remember about the definition of the tensor product. What you would really like here is to think uh, if you take here ZH on a certain vector, then in this tensor product, it will be the same as Z tensor FH of H acting on V by definition of the tensor product. And this guy will go to Z FH of H on the V because of this uh, twisted linear. And this guy will go to the same. So this means that this is indeed a linear map. And this gives you uh, the functoriality. The Consequence of this is that uh, you get homology maps uh, from, uh, I will summarize just uh, quick with coefficient in VFH to H star with coefficient in this. So we have uh, homology maps like this. And more generally, here for two, an automorphism of H, uh, then uh, you can here compose with two and here compose with a two. And this uh, twisted representation means you have a font on a category on a groupoid whose object are automorphism of H and whose morphism are mapping classes compatible with. So this twisted uh, action is just a functor of what we call the action group, an action group. So this is uh, the story about theorem A. Now I will switch uh, to the screen. Uh, for the Schrodinger case. So question of this rather long uh, first part. Okay, so now we specialize to Schrodinger. Okay, so here this is uh, equation for the infinite dimensional Schrodinger representation. So this is very well known stuff, maybe not uh, so much for topologists, for topologists but uh, uh, by the way, my reference would be a very nice book uh, by uh, Lyon and Verne, where you can find this. And uh, uh, even in the infinite dimensional cases, uh, you, you, this will say, will tell you something that they can, there are induced representation. Know the construction. So you see, uh, the, the Hilbert space is L2 of Rg, and you have a formula for the action. And the strong point is that this W is an irreducible representation. A priori, everything was done over R, but we can uh, specialize. And up to isomorphism, it is the unique irreducible representation. Uh, with a uh, given character. Uh, it's not written here, but it's unitary. Okay, uh, I should put unitary somewhere. So we have this representation and we have a finite dimensional counterpart. In this case, you can do really an induction because uh, this is really an irreducible representation on a finite version, on a finite question of the Heisenberg group. Okay. Uh, the important point is to see that uh, the central character is defined by this formula. 
So in this case, uh, sorry, well, maybe I should say here uh, that here you have a parameter uh, which is a real non-zero real number called in this setting the Planck constant. And uh, when the Planck constant is two pi times rational, then uh, the discrete Heisenberg group has a finite dimensional representation. And uh, this is uh, that you have also. So this times you see the character, the character has a finite order to n. And this is why I just take uh, n even. You can also work with n odd, uh, but then it's not exactly the same constant group. That's why. But it can also be done. It's just uh, to be simpler. So you, you have this representation. And uh, the Stone von Neumann theorem. So, what uh, says the Stone von Neumann theorem? It says that when we are twisting before, in fact, the local system uh, is equivalent to the original one. We can untwist. And then uh, what we get uh, is that if you twist, this is written here. This uh, Stone von Neumann theorem provides a unitary isomorphism between the twisted representation and the original one. And uh, it's defined up to S1 because we are unitary. And uh, from this, uh, we can identify the homology with twisted coefficient with the original homology and get a, a representation to the projective group. See, we are uh, the homological action descend to uh, an action from a representation from M of sigma to uh, the projective unitary group. And now the end of the game is to say when you have a projective action, uh, you can linearize up to a central extension. And uh, we can show that uh, because all this is organized by inclusion uh, of a genus in this, the next one. So we have a universal central extension uh, for G bigger than four. Is, uh, a priori, this comes from computation and the stability result from error at the beginning. And then uh, it's compatible with the inclusion. It's always the same, it's stabilized. If you restrict to the small genus, uh, you get what I, we call a stable universal extension. And what we get is a unitary representation from this uh, stable uh, universal extension to uh, the unitary group of this homology. And uh, in the case, so I gave you the dimension in this case. Sorry, I think uh, I should stop here with a uh, slide of question. So question with this is more for opening the discussion. So of course, uh, we have a question about kernel. So it's easy to see that we recover the Johnson filtration because we can do the trivial representation. But, uh, That's a two strong question here. Uh, if you remember about uh, this uh, discussion of Cashton property for mapping class group, it would be also, also interesting to know if in the inverse space case, uh, we have almost invariant vectors, if you know about this. This is related with Cashton property. Uh, one strong question to open the discussion is, uh, is this uh, classical of quantum? Everything I said was is completely classical. Also, of course, uh, Eisenberg and Schrödinger uh, sounds uh, quantum. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I'm thinking about uh, work, recent work by Jules Martel, uh, where, um, but also uh, it's connected with uh, big low stuff, uh, where you have a homological model for the quantum SL2. And here, uh, I do think 
that this comes uh, with quantum SL2 action. If, you have, if we have time to discuss, I can say why. And uh, of course, uh, I finish with the first uh, remark. <laughs> so, uh, here, we have finite number of generators for the Heisenberg, but because we have a tower of inclusion, uh, the inductive limit is uh, a surface of infinite genus, which correspond to the infinite number of generators of the Heisenberg algebra considered in Corona Pegasus. So it should be very challenging. Uh, that, I mean, the, uh, the categorification is a very strong and powerful machinery where you input uh, some uh, basics and you output something very uh, strong, much stronger. So, uh, it suggests to put uh, this inside the machinery. Thank you so much. Any questions, Mark? Um... Any question? So it is easy to see what happens when you take G to be zero, because you have you add some R's to the G at some point. What do you get? Uh, when the genus is zero. Uh, when you recover the, I mean, it, it's difficult because yeah, I should say this that uh, Van and Co. Uh, did something for surface. Uh, they did something for the break group on a surface. They insisted that the break group of surface the, uh, should, they wanted representation not of the rapid class group, but of the break group of surfaces in such a way uh, that it contains uh, strictly uh, the Lorentz representation. So in some sense, uh, the thing they are doing has a similar flavor, but the situation is much more complicated. So we are restricted in the case where we include the trivial braid. Okay. <laughs> group inside. But, uh, it's more an analogy uh, that the braid group is a mapping class group. And so, uh, we want to work with the empty mapping class group, with the mapping class group of empty surface. And the, the analogy uh, works correctly with the key point that uh, you should not have been right, but almost have been nice. This is really the main message. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Picture of this configuration space and the spirit of the original Bigelow sure. sure. sort. And we, we are even uh, able to do uh, explicit computation uh, where uh, we are, this is a very good question, where we are uh, computing with uh, these uh, forks and noodles type. And uh, in fact, uh, I can explain. Uh, this way, if you have genus one, let's take uh, n equal to g equal one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have your model. And that's all. So then uh, I give you two arcs. So this alpha arc and beta arc. Well, okay, uh, I, that was gamma one, gamma two. Okay. Okay. And because I have to uh, put two points on two arcs, I have dimension three. Either I put uh, two arcs, two points here, or two points uh, on the other one, uh, one on each side. And so here, uh, if we want to compute the action and the formula are on, on the, in the paper, uh, we have uh, to compute a three by three matrix. And uh, we have to take care about the twist. But this can be done. And how do we compute this? So we take a dual basis. I mean, uh, you, you, when you take Hn Borel of Cn, Cn minus 
uh, let's say z bracket h is simplified because this will uh, contain the rest. Then you can uh, intersect with h n native of c n uh, c n plus gamma z bracket h, and you have intersection pairing with z bracket h, and we can find uh, dual basis. And this dual basis uh, is represented uh, by these arcs, which has a dual arcs. But now uh, you do not, uh, it's good that, so, okay. So here we have basis uh, notation. Uh, let's say V1, uh, V2, uh, W1, W2, but my notation is not good. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that when I take uh, these blue arcs, uh, then you have a dual basis uh, represented by uh, delta one, delta two. So delta one, delta two represent certainly a relative uh, cycle, but uh, you also have delta one cross uh, delta one slightly shifting. This is also a cube. And you have delta two plus delta two shift. And these are dual basis. So if uh, you do a den twist here, then you take the image of this basis and you intersect uh, with the other one. You count uh, the intersection in the sense of configuration and you work a little bit carefully for understanding in the cover what is the monomial. And the output is the matrix. So you are representative for the basis in a completely explicit way. I don't know this, this answer completely your question. It's complicated. Uh, then, I mean, it's, we, 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 have, we were able to compute by hand uh, the de uh, generating then twist. And then uh, we are using a computer system for uh, taking the product of matrices. For example, uh, because this can be also this surface is like this. And the question is what about the action of the then twist uh, parallel to the boundary? This is important if you plug this small surface in the big one. And uh, uh, for example, here, uh, we, you can, we can check commutation with the generic. And we have this guy, uh, is, here you have A and B twist. And uh, as you know, uh, in the presentation of SL2, uh, you take AB to the four, ABA to the four. And you get this guy. So we are able to come to this guy uh, using a computer system. We are able, it's a very, uh, over Z bracket H, uh, it's a very strange matrix, but we could check uh, that it, it, uh, with the computer system that it indeed commute uh, with uh, the action of those. They are computable. Thing. As a guess is that there is nobody. Yeah, yeah I understand the guess. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you see, I, I'm doing thing and other, and this was uh, mostly started with uh, 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 a with student in uh, Laos, so it took some time. I had uh, the idea of this system for a long time, uh, but uh, I I tried a bit uh, to understand. Uh, some trick for the faithfulness and uh, 
it's not, it doesn't look impossible. But uh, I didn't uh, work uh, so much. Uh, if you have ideas, you are very welcome. <laughs> I would be very interested in this. Uh, and your question. Uh, in which sense? Uh, ah, uh, it's topological, <laughs> but of course, as you know, you are specialist on this for this. Yeah, uh, if you take a Riemannian metric uh, on this surface, then uh, you have symplectic structure, complex symplectic, uh, and symplectic structure. Uh, and but, uh, and the, the, the cycles I have are real. So we have a situation with Lagrangian intersection, and we are exactly uh, counting a Lagrangian intersection. So it's clear that it's very appealing with real theory, very clear. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I, should, uh, I should discuss this with specialists. Uh, I should say that it's a situation where uh, you are intersecting uh, Lagrangian, go, uh, proper Lagrangians, in, which have infinity to infinity. Yeah. And you have to control what happens at infinity uh, when you are counting. So I'm not very comfortable with this. But clearly, uh, it's a geometric picture. Uh, which is very appealing, sure, sure. That would be a way to categorify the situation. <laughs> yeah, nice way. No, but I think on this surface, people have been looking more at things with uh, with boundaries than full surfaces. Yeah, but uh, I mean, at the, we are not, the point is not at the level of the surface. It's at the level of the configuration. Yeah. Uh, in Iga Fleur's uh, stories, they are uh, working uh, with symmetric spaces, uh, not uh, configuration. Uh, I mean, it's not completely impossible that uh, you can do something with symmetric spaces with the two of the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sure, it's, it's uh, very happy. Professor, I suggest we thank uh, Mr. Gunn.